Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Today we're looking at Carol Arnott on The Sid Roth Show, so let's jump right in. The video we're looking at today is with John and Carol Arnott on The Sid Roth Show explaining why some people may miss the rapture. But before we get into this, I wanted to address the scammers out there that may send you messages to donate money to orphanages and stuff, but have my picture or other Christian YouTubers' pictures on them. If you're ever wondering, that didn't sound like Sean or Caleb or Brother John Elving, just click on the icon of their post and you'll see the page is not ours. So, back to the Sid Roth Show. And we may come back to this video on another topic as well, but the part I want to focus on today is the sudden manifestations Carol has and what's really going on. They start off talking all normal, and I want to play just a short part of this to show you how in control Carol really is. She's explaining a vision she had. And, and I felt to look behind me and said, they were the most beautiful people standing behind me and I said oh Jesus who are these and he said they're the broken and the hurting and the outcasts and the downtrodden and the ones that you know have nothing and I have bidden them to come into my banquet feast so we can see she's totally composed telling her story Later on, she tells of a prophetic dream she had, and once again, we'll see that she's totally composed. Now, Carol, uh, a few years ago, had a most amazing dream and then a prophetic word that falls. So why don't you share that with mm. us? It started, I, my son was supposed to come. John was away. My son was supposed to come for my birthday, uh, which some years is on Mother's Day. And this year was on Mother's Day. Anyway, he phoned and said he had to go to work and couldn't get out of it and he couldn't come. So I was kind of discouraged and I wasn't feeling well. So I said to the Lord, now don't do this, but anyway, this is what I did. I said to the Lord, Lord, if you want me to go to church in the morning, you wake me up. Anyway, I went to bed and I woke up. And I thought, oh my gosh, what time is it? And I looked at the clock and it was quarter to 10. And our church starts at 1030 and I'm a half an hour away. So as before, we see that her communication is just fine and she continues like that and even tells us about how she heard the audible voice of God. And so as I'm slipping out of bed, my foot touched the floor, the audible voice of God, the Father. Now. I know the difference because Jesus, when I got saved, repeated the 23rd Psalm out loud to me when I got saved. So, Yep, she hears God the Father's audible voice, and Jesus even read a psalm to her when she was saved. So, she continues just fine like this for a while, but when she gets to the part where she's explaining this dream, things go sideways. Oh, God. Are we doing the dream today? And he said, no, this was a test of your obedience. Now, the dream. <sighs> and we're going to do a count to show how many of those little moments she has. I was standing at the front of our church and the, oh, and the poet, we have a higher, you know, main floor and then the higher stage. So I was standing in front of where the podium was and I'm worshiping away, having a great time with the Lord. And all of a sudden I'm in a, a, a glory cloud. Glory clouds that give off gold dust and stuff seem to be common in the New Apostolic Reformation, but glory clouds are not actually mentioned in the Bible. And I'm going up, it was like a whirlwind, going up, going up, and I'm in the center looking up, and I said, Lord, are we going through the roof? And, and he got up to the roof, and, and then he came, he started to take me back down again. So I landed on my feet, and whoa, 
I don't know what happened. And I don't know what's happening here with these Heidi Baker style woes. Why after talking normal for several minutes can she suddenly not control these strange manifestations? God is not getting any glory from this, and it actually shows the opposite of one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is self-control. But either something came off of me, uh, and then something came on me, and ah, uh, I went and I grabbed the mic, and I started saying to the people, people, there is going to come Ah, a new cloud of his glory. And in that glory is the fear of the Lord. Ah, but it's based on the Father's love. It's not an outward, ah, fear. It is an inward circumcision of the heart. And, oh, I said. And why does John Arnott just stand there like this is normal? Oh my gosh, the glory cloud is starting to come. Whoa, it's starting to come down. I can see it. And whoa. And I said to the people, people, the glory cloud is coming. I fear for your lives. If you have secret sin in your life, if you have been taking, well, the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus for granted and using it for your own Whoa, ways and... And notice, she slipped into this strange state, almost like a trance with her eyes closed, and these manifestations happen more and more. And saying, oh, God will forgive me. He's so incredibly forgiving. Wow. I tell you, to come to the front, the mercy seat of God is open. Whoa. And those of you that do not want to repent... Please run from this building because I do not know what is going to happen. Whoa. And so people just started to scatter. They just, some went out and some ran to the front and it was just this back and forth. And then, whoa, the Lord showed me. And this continues like this until the end of her story, but we can stop now. But she finally goes back to normal. So the question is, what's really happening when someone in the NAR suddenly starts manifesting these strange out-of-control movements? Scripture says that God is not a God of confusion in 1 Corinthians 14.33. Other translations say that God is not a God of disorder. And what's really interesting is the context of this verse. The verse before it speaks about the spirits of prophets being subject to prophets, and then says that God is not a God of disorder or confusion. She was giving prophecy, and I gotta say, when I see people acting all wacky like that, it sure does confuse me if it's coming from God. And as mentioned before, it shows the opposite of the Holy Spirit's fruit of self-control. We don't read of any of the apostles or prophets in the New Testament acting like this when they speak of God. So why are we seeing it today in some movements and only when they're speaking on the topics of God? In my personal opinion, based on what we read in scripture, I don't believe this is of God and it must be something else. But what about you? Please leave your thoughts on this topic in the comments below and until next time, take care and God bless.